Hey guys, how's it going? So every now and then you may see, you know, a yo-yo in company promote that one of their celeb players, whether it be Jeffrey Stein, Zach Gormley, I don't know, those are the only two I've kind of seen do it. And they'll put them up on an Ask FM account. And any player who wants to ask them a question can go ahead, type it in the um, type it in the box and ask them questions anonymously. But I thought that was pretty cool, so I started up an Ask FM so anyone could ask me any question and do it anonymously if they really wanted to. But then I realized, well, hey, as kind of like, you know, the kind of yo-yoing YouTube guy that everyone really comments on, I kind of do that already. So what I decided to do it was do the same thing I've already been doing, but with a twist. You guys can now ask me any question you want on my Ask FM page, and if the question's interesting enough, I'll answer it personally in one of these videos. Considering it's the first time I'm doing this, I'm gonna answer every single question I've received, so yep, let's get to it. Will you still use Yo-Yo Jam yo as freely now, or save them from damage? Okay, if you guys haven't heard already, Yo-Yo Jam officially shut down, meaning as of now, no more Yo-Yo Jam yo will ever be produced. So, Will that change how I play with my Yo-Yo Jam yo-yos? <clears throat> well, to be honest, a lot of my Yo-Yo Jam yo-yos that I really love, whether it be the New Breed, the Speeder, the Speeder 1, the Speed Maker, the Dark Magic, the Legacy, a lot of them stopped being manufactured a while ago. So, the closing down of Yo-Yo Jam, while tragic, isn't really going to affect how I play with my Yo-Yo Jams. Am I still going to play with them freely? Yes. This is going to be a pretty popular question, and it goes along the lines of, why did you leave Team Word? Um... Basically, the truth is there's no hard feelings between me and any of the crew members, any anyone regarding Word. It's just, I felt as if I had to like try and like, I felt as if I'd be more useful elsewhere. So basically, if you guys have been watching my videos for a while, I was really heavy on promoting Blueprint Strings, the IRA JPX, the 86400, pretty much all these yo-yos that Word creates. And I love those yo-yos, I love every single one of Word's yo-yos. They're all great, right? Blueprint strings, I still use them right now. I'm not even on the team anymore, but if I have to buy them, I probably will. It's a great product. The Irony JPX, the Irony in general, they're all super great yo-yos. The products that I really love, okay? The only problem with that is that Word hasn't really been manufacturing anything. And as a person who promotes things, and as a person who wants to like, you know, inform people of like the latest and greatest things, I don't think that I would be very useful on a team that isn't producing anything. So like every time someone asks me, you know, when when is there going to be an irony a, a irony JPX release? When is there going to be a blueprint string release? When is there going to be an 86400 release? Are you getting a signature yo, yo Like all of these things I can't answer because well the answer is I don't know. So I thought I should probably just try find something else, do my own thing for a while, and then maybe get picked up by another team somehow, somewhere. All right, just. I wanted to feel useful, and I think Word was a little too inactive for me to be actively promoting. That's that's basically the gist of it. Did you meet anyone interesting during your gap year traveling? Hint me. Um, I'm not really sure who that is. Like, who, who? Okay, I guess it's part of the anonymous thing. Yes, I did meet a whole lot of interesting people. I met yo-yo celebrities, real celebrities, really close friends that don't even yo-yo, acting people, language schools. Like, I met a whole ton of cool people. Um, and. How do you balance something you love, yo-yoing, with other commitments such as studies? Um, I think, <laughs> I think the main way to do this is, it depends what you really want out of yo-yo as well. If you want to do well in contests, then I would say try to find a practice method that's really efficient and doesn't make you have to sit there practicing for hours and hours and hours, okay? Maybe you can repeat an element like a lot of times. Maybe you can play certain parts of your freestyle and practice on like little segments of it instead of the whole thing. Just try to make your practicing as efficient as possible. If you just yo-yo for fun, I would say um, just discipline yourself up and you know dedicate a time for play when you play with your yo-yo and dedicate a time for study. Easier said than done. Advice that probably won't work when you're not high on willpower, but that's basically my answer. Any new videos coming up? Yes, there are a lot of new videos coming up, there are a lot of tutorials coming up, there are a lot of new vlogs coming up. Basically, I'm back now, so yeah, there are videos coming up. Gentry Stein vs. Paul Kergel. 
Um, from a competition standpoint, Gentry usually wins, but Poor Purple's got a whole lot of really cool bangers as well, so I can't really like decide on that. Like, what's the criteria? If, if you're talking about competition, then Gentry wins. He was world champion at one point, and he's what, sixth in the world now? Poor Kerbal's got like a whole set of bangers that would make any player in the world look like minuscule too. So both of them, super badass players, can't really decide. What is the best advice you can give to a player who is about to compete for the first time? <laughs> the first time I competed, I was really competing to win. I closed my mind off to any new ideas and I just drilled down and practiced my freestyle. In retrospect, I should have socialized a lot more and I should have been open to players who were obviously better than me and learning from them. Right, so yes, you should try to do well in your very first contest, but be open-minded. Go around, talk to a lot of players. Talk to a lot of players that can yo you longer, that can yo you better than you, right? Go around, absorb everything, okay? Because more often than not, your first competition, you tend to get your ass kicked. I got my ass kicked. Some, some people are so talented that they win the first contest they enter, but that's not me and that's not most people, I guess. So I would say go there, you know, practice, do well, but I would really use that experience to really soak up a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience, a lot of new tricks. You better player for next time. If I make it to Cleveland, will I see you at Worlds 16? Julian Chi Yi Jian. I, on, at this point, I don't really know. I've been traveling a lot and it's time for me to like knuckle down and start studying, but um, I really want to go. So at this point, I'm going to say yes but don't hold me to it. Would you rather be sponsored by a brand that makes premium yo-yos, yo-yo recreation, so you can you get the expensive throws for free, or be sponsored by a brand that mass produces decent yo-yos for a cheaper price, C3 or Yo-Yo Factory, so you can promote the brand easily without scaring others about the price? Um, if I were to get on a new team, I'd have to really love the yo-yos they produce, and if it's a really premium, high-end yo-yo that I really like, then it would have to be you know, a, a higher premium brand. That being said, there's a lot of other yo-yos that are lower priced that are still really good as well. It, it Basically, how much the yo-yos cost wouldn't be a main factor in my decision, if that's what you're asking. What would matter is, is the company active and are they making yo-yos and do I like the yo-yos? That would probably be the main criteria, not how expensive the yo-yos are. That doesn't really affect me, that's more of the company's, I don't know, profit, analysis kind of thing, or whatever they decide to sell their yo-yos at. Okay, this is a question I get asked a lot. Do you recommend the Shutter or the Horizon? And the fact of the matter is, it depends. If you talk to one person, they say Horizon all the way. If you talk to another person, they'll say Shutter all the way. Personally, what do I prefer? I prefer the Shutter. There's a lot of people that prefer the Horizon, okay? In fact, there's a whole team. There's like a, 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 te a, new, there's a yo-yo factory team Horizon. Basically, I would say, if you're more of an all-rounded kind of tech kind of person, go for the shutter. If you're looking for like the extreme kind of tricks, go for the horizon. I've been to a couple of competitions and I could hit a clean routine at home, but when I'm on stage, I screw everything up. How can I improve? First of all, I would say practice your routine a lot and practice it in areas that make you feel nervous, okay? So I would say, Get in front of a camera, try and practice your routine there, um, practice it in front of your friends, and such and such. The next thing, and this was advice I was actually given by Josh Yi a really long time ago when I was going around and I didn't understand why I couldn't hit a clean routine. Basically, there's a mindset that you can get yourself into that really psychs you out before a competition. So, there's a lot of times we like, I really want to do well, I really want to do well, I really want to do well, and you're thinking all about like just doing well, you're practicing like, like a ridiculous amount, and you're putting so much pressure on yourself that when you step up, you blow your two, minute, two minutes or three minutes and you, you screw up your freestyle entirely. Okay, the advice he gave me was relax, relax a little, okay? At the end of the day, yo yo is a game, okay? The prize money, the bragging rights, all gonna fade in a couple of years, okay? So yes, it's cool to win, but it's not gonna be like the end of the world if you don't. Relax a little bit, okay? Stop being so focused on doing well at all costs, and that mindset will actually allow you to perform better than if you're stressed out and just like, I wanna win, or if I don't gonna win, I'm gonna die. So basically, what I would say is, practice very hard, 
practice in places that make you feel nervous, and when the day comes around, relax. Okay. Um, all the questions regarding the virtual throwdown. Okay, there was a bit of a mishap between me and Wayne when I was in Vietnam. I forgot to send him the scores. He sent me the scores, but I couldn't upload them because the Wi-Fi connection was shaky, and I couldn't post it onto Instagram because the image was too small. Basically, I'm going to get on that straight away. Um, no dates yet, but I will be back, okay? The virtual throwdowns are not over, they are still up and running. Get ready. New video on that soon. How do you get to yo-yo when you have a tight schedule and how many hours do you play yo-yo? Again, this was a very similar question to the one before. Make sure your practice method is efficient as possible. How long do I play yo-yos? Honestly, I don't know. When I'm practicing for a competition, I'll probably run through the freestyle again and again for like two hours maybe. But Normally, I've always got a yo-yo in my head. I'm always playing around doing with it. Kind of like doodling if I was like an artist or something. I'm always kind of playing around with it, doing just tricks and stuff. So, basically, make an efficient practice method and how many hours do I play yo-yos when I'm practicing for competition? About two hours of solid practice. Hey Brandon, could you make a video on explaining to newer players how not everything is based on scoring high or winning competitions? I think a lot of new players with potential need to understand this more as they seem to be enjoying it less than others. Thanks. Nikki Yip. Um, basically, yo-yoing is meant to be fun, okay? That's why you start doing it, right? And after a while, you start to get a little bit better at it and you think, hey, it would be pretty fun to win a contest, right? So you start going and practicing and dedicating a lot of dedic dedicating a lot of time and effort to winning that competition. And when you finally win, that's pretty fun as well. All of it is fun, fun, fun. What you should be worried about is when yo-yoing itself isn't fun anymore and the only fun you're trying to get is the win from that competition because then 90% or 95%, no, probably 99% of your yo-yoing is agony and then that 1%, that 3 minutes while you're on the freestyle and you can potentially win is the only amount of fun you get. So it's not really the best use of your time. Anyway, personally, I'm still in the competitive mindset. I'm not really yo-yoing for fun anymore. Everything I do is kind of catered towards the competitive side of yo-yoing. But, if I ever got to a point where yo-yoing itself wasn't fun anymore, I'd probably stop altogether. So, my opinion basically is, yo-yo for fun, and be careful when you become too competitive and it's not fun anymore because, hey, what's the point of yo-yoing if it's not fun? This question must go into your vid. Can you do a backflip like Shu Takata? No. I can kind of do a kip-up like Shu Takata, but I can't do it with the yo-yo swinging underneath me, so... Yeah, still not as cool as Shu Takata. What message would you like to deliver to aspiring throwers in India where the yo-yoing scene is stagnant in terms of promotion as well as competition? Karan Placido Bajaj. Did I? I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce that correctly. Yeah. Basically, I'm not particularly sure what you can do from this point. Yeah, my advice would be try to make it try to make it as appealing or as profitable for a larger company to come in and host a competition in your country and then maybe you can develop a yo-yoing scene that way. Other than that, as a player and as a yo-yoer, I'm not really sure what you can do. You can self-promote yourself and try and get a little bit of internet credit, but at the end of the day, if you want to compete, the best way is to try and get something established, whether it be establishing it yourself or making it appealing for another company to come in to India and establish it there. Can you do another video for Guy Revolution? Because the previous pen got taken down, Tanjinda. Um, I might do that, I might, um, yeah, Guy Revolutions isn't as cool as it was like, what, four or five years ago when I first posted it up, so, yeah, um, I'll think about it, I'm not really sure yet. Yo-Yo in particular, do you recommend the most for starter yo-yo players? Basically, whenever anyone asks for, like, beginner yo-yos, I directly point them to Yo-Yo Factory. And I did this even when I was on Word because... Right now, Yo-Yo Factory has like the most affordable and the most competitive yo-yos on the market. Like, Gentry Stein won Worlds with a $40 yo-yo, and he won Nationals with a $16 yo-yo. I mean, it's getting pretty ridiculous now. I mean, 
if, if you really look at that, you're like, well, why do we need like $250 yo-yos? Basically, what I would recommend is either, depending on your budget, I would recommend a Replay Pro. That, that's a really cool yo-yo. Maybe, oh, I can't really recommend any more yo-yo jam stuff. Um, or maybe a Shutter or Horizon. That's $40, that's a bit pricey. But if I would recommend companies, take a look at what yo-yo factory's got. They've got a lot of nice beginner stuff. Basically, Replay Pro, One Star, North Star, Proto Star, all those stuff, really cool for beginner players. Check it out. Would you ever consider doing another contest online, but with a giveaway for the winner? Um, the whole idea behind the virtual throwdown is that there's, you know, no prizes, it's basically just feedback. Would I consider doing it? Maybe if, you know, I got a sponsorship or something, but if I'm afraid that if I do that, it'll change what the Virtual Throwdown's all about and people will start expecting prizes like month after month and that's not really what I'm going for. So I consider it but still need a couple of kinks to work out. Why you started yo-yoing? I am your big fan, Matthias. Matthias? Matthias? Did I say that right? Basically I've always been interested in yo-yos but the turning point was when my cousin had a yo-yo on his desk, I was playing with it up and down and I thought this is really cool, went up online searched up what yo -yo, real yo-yoers could do. After that, I was hooked. And what, seven years later, here I am, still yo-yoing. What do you think about sub-styles such as Mobius or Double Dragon? I think they're really cool. And I also think that with yo-yoing been around for, you know, the time that it has, it's very interesting to see what people can do within similar realms of wanting. So there was a, there was a time when I thought about getting into Mobius, but I got a bit lazy. I never really tried Double Dragons, but I think both of them are really cool and really innovative. And depending on how much those trends catch on, they might be more relevant in years to come. But at the moment, I think they're pretty cool. Since you left Warred, do you still use the Irony JPX? Yes, I still use the Irony JPX. It's a great yo yo. Can you do a giveaway? Um. I don't really have any like new yo-yos to do a giveaway with. I mean, when I did it with Word, there were like new yo-yos in their package. I mean, I've got a lot of yo-yos that I've used, but I don't really think that'd be good giveaway material. So, working on it. Or, I know you're no longer involved with Word, but do you know if any blueprint strings or JPXs are going to be available anytime soon? Sorry, I've got no idea. Even when I was on Word, I have no idea. So, yeah, answer is no idea. Can you make a tutorial on how to tie kitty string? Thanks. Fun fact, kitty string is tied the same way as any other string in the world, but because you, want, you guys want a tutorial. Okay, basically how you do it is, this is, this is, okay, I know this is a blueprint string, but it'll work on a kitty string as well. Tie it up like that, twist it around, knot it up there, pull tight, like so, and now that your string is like that, get something, maybe a factory bearing tool, scissors, I'm using pliers, cut. And that is how you cut any string, including kitty. Japanese players are known for their speed, Americans are known for the technicality of their tricks, Mexicans are known for their sideways tricks, so what do you think Australian players are known for? Um chugging beers in freestyles, maybe? Who ate my cheats? Hmm, let's think. I'm gonna go with Hiroki Suzuki. Why? Because Hiroki Suzuki's nickname is Mickey, and Mickey, we all know, is a mouse. And who eats cheese? Mouses. So, Hiroki Suzuki ate your cheats. 